in the land of the book of life. If you wouldn't raise your hand, they can change for you this morning.
Yeah. I wonder how many people know him this morning. Amen. Both of you, that's good. We got a lot of work to do this morning. <laughs> yeah. Well, hey, listen, we, we are glad you're here today. I know you, you're wondering why, some of you is wondering why we started so soon. No, we just started on time for once. Amen. And this will be the new norm. So 11.05, we will start. And announcements will now be at the end of the church service, so you can't run out the door. And if you do run out the door and you can't remember the announcement, that's on you, bro. Uh, we're going to get into the church service quicker um, to get to honoring Jesus quicker and giving him glory because he deserves all of our time and all of our glory and praise. Um, you say, well, I don't know about that. Well, then maybe you should get to know him like I know him. Amen. And you'll know he brings life to us. Look at Mark chapter 14. Go ahead. Go ahead. Amen. Lollipop got what you wanted. Amen. 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 Yeah, Mark chapter 14. I'm thankful today that um, uh, we're going to be having our uh, a, a baptism again today. Amen. Uh, it's been, yeah, amen. Four months of uh, excruciating waiting and trying to figure out failure after failure after failure, but we've almost got it whipped. We've got like a, maybe a small leak, but it ain't a bad leak. Amen. It ain't going through the floor and that's a good thing. So, uh, but we're going to have uh, I, I, six or seven or eight or 12 or 13 baptisms after the service today. Amen. You say, what is that, preacher? That's victory. Amen. That is, that is people who want to be identified with Christ, buried in Christ Jesus, risen a new creature. The old person that you used to see, the one you used to know, the one you used to run with, the one you used to get high with, the one you, get, you used to get drunk with, the one, the one that you wouldn't give a dollar on the street to ain't the same person that you, you, they used to be. How many is thankful for that today? Amen. To the glory of God. Mark chapter number uh, uh, 14 I, I, I'm doing my best to walk us towards the cross, into the tomb, but we aren't going to stay there. Amen. And on our journey, we're going to follow Jesus. Who said amen? And my man, he's always helping me out. Amen. It's going to rub off on you, Chris. I promise you keep hanging out with me. You're going to shout too. Amen. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> 14, at chapter 14, we're going to go into Gethsemane. If you don't mind standing for the reading of God's word as we look down to verse number 32. They came. Who came? That's Jesus and some of his disciples. Not all of them. One is collecting his bag and saying, I know where he's going and I know how to get there. But the rest of them come with him. But then, the Bible says this, they, they came to a place which was called Gethsemane. And he saith to his disciples, sit here while I pray. And he taketh with him Peter, John, uh, James, and John. Those are the ones that went up on the Mount Transfiguration with him who got to watch him as the glory of the Lord came on him. And they, they were like, man, this is crazy. So now, they, they've been known to be in crazy places with Jesus, so he ain't afraid to take them a little bit further. But even they couldn't go where he was fixing to go. So the Bible said he began, he began to be sore amazed and to be very heavy. He saith unto them, he saith unto them, Shane, where you at? Right, right there. <laughs> Amen. Changes everything. He saith unto them, My soul is exceeding sorrowful unto death. 
tarry ye here and watch. And he went forward a little, fell on the ground, prayed that if it were not, if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. And here's what he said. Abba, Father, all things are possible unto thee. It sounds like he's praying like you do. Buttering God up. Amen. God, all things are possible to you. Now do what I need you to do for me. Anybody prayed that prayer recently? Amen. Take away this cup from me. Nevertheless, not what I will, but what thou wilt. And he came and found, findeth them asleep. And uh, saith unto Peter, Simon, sleepest thou? Could not, couldest not thou watch one hour? Watch and pray, lest ye enter into temptation. The spirit is ready, but the flesh is weak. And again he went away and prayed and spake the same words. And uh, when he returned, he found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. Neither wist they what to answer him. And he cometh a third time and saith, Sleep now, take your rest. It is enough. The hour is come, uh, is come. Behold, the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for being so good to us. Lord, I pray that you would continue to work today. We've already felt your presence in the service today. We're thankful for what you have done. But Lord, we're looking forward and we're praying on, or praising on credit for what you're about to do. And Lord, I pray that you'd empty me of self and sin. Fill me with your spirit because today is the Super Bowl. And I pray that together, Lord Jesus, we leave no doubt, for it's only in your name we pray. Amen. And you may be seated. <clears throat> the Bible tells us in verse number 36 that Jesus came to a place called Gethsemane. This was not just a place that he was passing through. This was not just a place that he just happened to come upon. It wasn't just a place that he uh, 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 seen a sign and said, hey, this is a good place to pray. No, this was the place. It was on his mind, it was on his heart, and he, in his intentions, he walked there on purpose. He had a plan to why he wanted to be there, so it was a chosen place. You say, preacher, what does Gethsemane mean? It means olive press. It is a place, you're going to notice that on the screen, if you can see those, um, it is a place where they would, would pick and shake the olive trees. They would gather up the olive, uh, uh, would you call them berries? What do you call those? The fruit of the tree. And they would gather them up and they would carry them over to this millstone and they would put them in the millstone and they would either put a donkey on the end of this or, or a sleigh or just an, an, an unfortunate feller, amen? And probably a son. <laughs> And they would start pushing this around in a circle. Well, as they pushed it around in a circle, it would literally crush the olive fruit. They would go around it so many times and then they would scrape it off of the wheel and scrape it out of the bottom and they would put it into a, 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 a basket. With, it, it, but the basket isn't what you would think it would look like. It was a, a, a basket that was more like a coffee filter if you will because it was it, the goal of the basket was to keep the the smashed fruit from infiltrating or staying with the uh, 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 oil so he would they would take and walk over to the press this is one of the types of presses that you will find in Israel today uh, as an example of, of what they used in the past they would take this and place it at the bottom of this, uh, or at the top where this piece of wood is. They would put it right here, and they would begin to put the press on it. They would turn that press until the oil would begin to drip. They would do this three separate times. They would crush it once. They would press it thrice. Why? 
because the pressing of the fruit would bring forth the oil that was necessary. So when Jesus comes to Gethsemane, it was on purpose. He went there because he, God was leading him there because he was about to be crushed. God would place him on the grindstone. He would begin to go around and around and around and around until Jesus was crushed. The Bible said this, that he was amazed, very heavy, exceedingly sorrow, even unto death. Why? He was completely crushed in his spirit. Three times he would walk away from Peter, James, and John and a stone's throw, as Matthew would say. And he would pray. He'd get up from the prayer and he'd go back and find them sleeping. He'd go back once again three times. You say what was happening? He was pressed. The Bible says, uh, says to us that he, he was praying. He was praying in the pressing. And he would say, God, Father, all things are possible. You control all things in your hand. But this cup, God, I know you created it for me. And nevertheless, I want you to take this from me. But if you won't take it from me, God, I understand. And I'll do what you want me to do. He was pressed in his spirit because he did not want to take the cup that God was about to hand him. You said, preacher, what was in the cup? Preacher, what was in the cup? Well, what was in the cup that would make him scream out in agony to his father? Ladies and gentlemen, sin was in the cup. He who knew no sin became sin. Sin was in the cup. Not his sin. He'd never known sin. From the day that he woke or was born out of his mother's loins, he was never, he, listen, he cried when he as a baby cried. It was not a cry, a lie cry like some of our kids do. Y'all kids don't cry lying. I got lying babies that cry and lie at the same time. They want a cookie. And they cry for the cookie. They don't need the cookie. They want the cookie, so they cry. they liars. <laughs> Amen. If they needed it, they wouldn't have to lie for it. Amen. Because we knew what time to feed them and what they needed. The liars. Y'all kids ain't liars. I know y'all are all holy kids. <laughs> Sit down with their Sunday school teachers and ask them, how holy are they? <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, it was not his sin, because he'd never known sin. He never stubbed his toe and said a cuss word. He never made one illicit remark. Not one time did his mind or eyes wander. The Bible says that he only went about doing the will of the Father. If the Father didn't will it, he didn't do it. He was perfect in all rights. So when the cup came on him, when the cup came into his hands, the Bible says that he was weary because of the sins, not his sins, but our sins. And for the wages of sin is what? Death. In that cup was death. Physical death, spiritual death. Physical death is when the body dies. There is no breath left in the body. The heart stops beating. The brain stops working. The hands stop moving. The eyes stop seeing. The ears stop hearing. That is death. But that's not the death that, that Jesus wanted to get away from. It was the spiritual death. You see, God can't stand sin. He can't look on sin, and he can't be a part of sin. Let me stop for a minute. Yeah. 
and say this. For you Christians who are in active sin and think that you still have a spiritual connection with God, you lying to yourself, to your life, to your family, to your friends, you can't find Jesus in a phone booth. Amen, preacher! That's good preaching. That's real preaching. That ain't that stuff that you get on TV where somebody smiles at you asking $35.50 for a prayer hanky. That's real preaching. Amen. You cannot have a relationship with God and be in active sin. God, there is a division between you and God. But Jesus stepped into the middle of that division. And he said, I gladly step into this knowing that we are going to be separated for a moment. I'm not going to feel your presence anymore. I'm not going to feel your presence, your touch anymore. I'm not going to have an open line of communication anymore, God. But I'm going to take this on, not because of my sin, but because the whole world needs me. He said, this is heavy. It's so heavy. And he was pressed. How hard was he pressed, preacher? The Bible, or Luke says this in Luke twenty two forty four. 44. He says, being in agony, he prayed more earnestly. And with, in his sweat was as it were great drops of blood falling down to the ground. He went to the olive press and got pressed until what we needed was pressed out of him. Mm-hmm. You see, ladies and gentlemen, he was pressed for me. Isaiah said he was wounded for our transgressions. Amen. He was bruised for our iniquities and the chastisement of our peace was upon him. Ladies and gentlemen, he was pressed for you. He was pressed for me. He was pressed for us. How many is thankful that Jesus shows a pressing for them? Amen. You said, preacher, why? Why was Jesus pressed for us? Because he knew what we needed. Everybody under the sound of my voice needed Jesus to pr be pressed for their lives. You say, preacher, why do I need it? Because, ladies and gentlemen, when he was pressed, he was pressed to provide light for our darkness. Once the oil has been extracted, it's been pre uh, the, the, the berry has been pressed, and out comes this oil. They would use that oil to fuel the lamp. The Bible confirms this in Exodus 27, 20, uh, where it says this, And thou shalt command the children of Israel that they bring forth pure olive oil, beaten for the light, to cause the lamp to burn always. Jesus knew I was living in darkness and I could not see, Brother Skip, I could not see a way out of the darkness. So Jesus went into Gethsemane to be pressed so that I could see a way out. When I was a little boy, we used to go camping all the time. <clears throat> we went to Sherwood. Uh, has anybody ever been to Sherwood Forest up in the Lewisburg area of uh, Greenbrier County? Yeah. We'd go up there, and this is before they had full hookups. Amen. You had to walk. <clears throat> if you had to do business, you had to walk at night. I remember going one day. We, we had a, a, a little... Uh, Coachman trailer. We all slept on top of each other, and mom and dad got the big bed. You had their back. Everybody else had mine. Sympathetic over here. Nancy, no sympathy for the preacher. <laughs> we all, I got up, and it was, it was late at night. There wasn't a light to be found. The fire had went out, and there was, dad had a Coleman lamp. Y'all know what those are? You, yeah. 
You put the ar arrow in there, amen. Yeah. <laughs> then you stick that lighter up in there and pray that it don't blow up in your face. <laughs> and it illuminates. I remember taking a flashlight out of the house or out of the trailer, going down the road, going finding the bathhouse. I used the restroom. I come back out, turn the flashlight back on and went. <laughs> and it, it, it done run out. <laughs> it got tired of being on, I guess. And I was like, I, there's no way couldn't see but then I remember there was a light down at the end of the road where the trailer was a light down at the end of the road where daddy was and I said well I may not be able to see what I'm standing in and I might not what know what I'm walking through but I know where I'm walking. <laughs> so I did not look down. I did not look to the left or the right. I began to walk as straight as I could because I knew that if I got to the light, I got to the Father. You say, why did Jesus have to go to Gethsemane? Because he had to be crushed so that we could get to the Father. How many is thankful that Jesus in the middle of darkness came and shined a bright light in their lives? See, I don't know about you, but I've been through some dark times. Some times where I felt like there was nobody around me. I was like, uh, Paul, no one cared for my soul. I looked over here and over there, and I felt so alone. The darkness seemed to engulf my life. Depression. Y'all know about that? Depression has friends. They're called me, myself, and I. And they start twisting around in your head and you start thinking things like nobody likes me. I ain't got a friend in this world. Why would this happen to me? I don't deserve this. And in the loneliness, in the middle of the night, when your kids are sleeping, when your wife isn't encouraging you, lonely, Brother Chris, in the hospital rooms, when your cell phone ain't ringing no more, the texters ain't sending you funny stories anymore, there ain't no memes, reels, Nothing distracts you from your own thoughts. That's when darkness hits and you feel so alone. It's then that Jesus said, hey, I've been where you are. I know what you've been through. And I come to sit right here. And show you there's a way out of this. <laughs> How many is thankful today that we have a God like that? <laughs> yeah. He was he provided a light. Preacher, why was Jesus pressed for us? Look at number two. It says this, he was pressed, not only uh, was he pressed to provide a light out of darkness, but he was pressed to purchase an ointment for our damage. How many knows this? That we can be damaged. You see, oil can be, this olive oil can be used as a medication for wounds. You say, preaching need you to prove it to me? Oh, good, you're going to be a Bible scholar today. Luke chapter 10 is where we find it. Jesus himself is the author of this story. So if you don't like it, take it up with him. Not me. You see, he tells of one man who was, who was from Jericho, who was visiting Jerusalem. And he had his bags with him. He had his stuff with him. And some robber, some thief, some liar come and seen him and, and, and was lying in wait and jumped him. Took all of his money. Took all of his stuff. 
But ladies and gentlemen, they even took the clothes off his back, left him naked, broke, and for good measures, they cut him deep. The Bible says they left him for dead. Left him for dead. Jesus said, and then a priest came walking by. This sounds like one of those good jokes that you only could tell around your boys. Amen? He said, a priest came. <laughs> he said, the priest looked on the man, saw the man, and walked on. He said, then a Levite come, that holy of holy men. He looked on him. But in all of his regalness, in all of his religion, he decided that it was better for him to walk on the other side of the road than to be next to a dying, dead, naked man. But then there was a Samaritan. This Samaritan would have been somebody that nobody wanted to talk to. He was, he was half Jew, half Gentile, and all the way broke. He was hopeless and helpless. Everybody in town turned their nose up at the Samaritans. They looked down on them with their, and thought of them as lowly creatures. But these, this Samaritan was a different kind of man. Instead of walking on the other side of the road, instead of sticking his nose up in the air, the Bible says that he walked over to where he was, had compassion on him, and went to him and bound his wounds, poured in oil and wine, and set him on his own beast and brought him to an inn and took care of him. What did Jesus do in Gethsemane? He went to be crushed. And pressed so that he could be the medicine that we need. When we're damaged, oh, he knew that there was going to come a time when we were going to be damaged. When I was a little boy, I used to stay at my grandma's house up on, in Little Creek. That's up in Shillions for some of you people who don't know. And it's up a holler. I live in West Virginia. It's not a hollo. It's a holler. Amen. Amen. How do you know? What's a, what's a holler? Well, go in between two mountains and go, hey! And it'll come back to you. That's a holler. Amen. We walked. We, she lived up Little Creek Holler. And I'd go stay with her. And I remember playing. She, <laughs> she had a swing set. This is the 90s. Everybody had one of those swing sets that didn't have no swing on it. Y'all remember those? Redneck monkey bars is what I call them. I'd climb all over that thing. She had 11 different color paints on it, and all of them were cracked. Every one of them. So you'd get up on that thing, cracked paint would be flying all in your eyes, rust fragments. <laughs> and I remember I got to where the eye hole screw goes all the way up in and there's a nut on the other side but on that screw there was one of them uh-ohs y'all ever said y'all know what an uh-oh is it means when you touch it, you go uh-oh and I fell off brother Skip looked at my hand and I was a blood right there no, I can handle other people's blood, but my blood's different. Your blood can come out you, I don't care. But my blood was made to stay in me. Y'all people who go give blood, I'm sorry. I ain't giving nobody nothing. God gave that to me, and I'm keeping my blood. I ran in the house and said, Mama! She said, what happened? I fell off your monkey bar. The swing? Yes, ma'am. I said, look, it's got the rust in it. It's got the paint in it. I'm a bleeding. You say, preacher, what did she do? She said, I know what to do. She went to the medicine cabinet. She didn't get the Nia Splam. Mm -mm. She got this little bottle that has this little dropper on the top of it. Straight out of hell. 
Yes, she did. She reached down there and said, Devil, pop, give that to me. This is for my boy. She said, give me that hand. I said, yes, ma'am. And she got that dropper out. And she went. And I said, ah! She put mithalatium on there. Is that how you say it? What he said. I only learned to read 10 years ago. And then she put that on there. It felt like my skin was crawling out. She said, you're going to be all right. I said, Mama, I don't feel all right. She said, you'll be all right. Here's a popsicle. And that made it better. (laughs) And that's how we got here. (laughs) She put those drops in there. It turned orangish, reddish color. My skin stayed that way for about two and a half years. (laughs) You don't wash it off. It comes off on its own. But I ain't got no scars. And if I did have a scar, it'd be a healed scar. You see, Jesus (laughs) was wounded for our transgression. But by his stripes, we are healed. (laughs) He was pressed, Brother Mike. (laughs) So that what run out of him could come on me. Because he knew the damage that I had. Listen. We don't look for damage. Nobody in here ever walked down the aisle to say, I do, to a divorce. Nobody. That wasn't in your 10-year plan. But damage happens. And you're felt, and all you can think of is that past relationship where you got hurt. Some people had a bad relationship. They weren't even married to them, but that person was an idiot. We call that in our day and time toxic relationships. Toxic. I thought toxic was a Britney Spears song. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Till I met some people. Hey. The creditors keep calling. We don't know where the money's going to come from. We didn't decide to be this way. We was just trying to live life. And damage hit us. And we don't know what to do about it. Jesus said, I see you. And I'm going to get him and to get pressed so that you can have an ointment in the middle of your damage to change everything. Not only. That's the last one. Let me give me that last one. What is this? Oh, yes, this is a good one. <laughs> well, why was Jesus pressed? He was pressed so that we could get out of darkness through his marvelous light. He was pressed (laughs) because we are so damaged and we need the balm of Gilead. But lastly, he's pressed to position us. That means he's got an anointing for a new destiny. You see, before him, I was destined for hell. Before him, I had no hope. I had no peace with him. But then I met Jesus, and all things changed. I had a destiny. They would use this oil for anointing. In 2 Kings chapter 9, you find Elijah sends uh, sends one of his students, if you will, uh, down to Ramoth Gilead. And uh, during the reign of this evil Ahab, he said, you know what? God looked down and said, hey, go tell that boy to go down there and anoint a new king. Now think about this. You got a king, but God wants another one. He said, go down there and He 
He said, the servant went down, took that box of oil, cracked it open on the top of that head, and said, God told me to tell you that you're fixing to be a king. you at? Yep. <laughs> he said, God told me to tell you that you ain't a captain no more. You ain't fighting in the army no more. You don't have to grab the sword and get cut on no more. You don't have to work no more. You don't have to feel the pain and agony of a slave no more. Because God said, not King Ahab, not that Jezebel, but God said that you are anointed to be king. You said, preacher, what's this have to do with me? Ladies and gentlemen, you had no hope. You were lost and on your way to hell. You didn't deserve nothing. You didn't, hey, listen, you didn't work for nothing. You can't save up enough money in the bank to be anything. But down out of eternity, look down on your life and said, I see so much more out of I don't see a drug addict. I don't see an alcoholic. I don't see a broke person. I see somebody who has potential to be somebody. And ladies and gentlemen, he cracked open something over your life and said, one day, son, it may not be today. It may not be tomorrow. But one day, Brother John, you're going to be a king and reign with him for eternity. How many is thankful that you get to reign with him? You see, he was pressed for me. He was pressed for me. Yeah. He was pressed for me. I'm so thankful that he chose to go to the pressing. Yes, me too. You may be here today and you've never accepted him as your savior, but he was pressed for you. He looked at who you are, saw who you could be, and chose you before you was even born. You say, preacher, I'm too damaged. No, 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 no. You're never too broken. That's right. For a master's hand to fix you. Amen. You say I live in too dark a world. No, 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 no. He is a light. He got you out because he's got a destiny, a place for you. With every head bowed and every eye closed, nobody looking around. Let me talk to the Christians in the room real quick. You sit here and you've got a story. The devil's done everything he can to beat on you, to take that story from you. But let me tell you this, in the middle of the darkness, in the middle of depression, in the middle of your damage, Jesus said you had a destiny. And I want to say this to every Christian in the room. You ought to be thankful that you have a God who got off a throne and was pressed for you. You're here today that is not saved, that's never gave your heart to Jesus. Let me ask you this. What's keeping you from Him? Let's do this for every person who's ever gave their heart to Jesus, who's ever called on Him who believe in their heart that Jesus is the Christ and He saved them from their sin. Will you raise your hand in testimony and give glory that He came to you? Maybe you're here today and you say this, preacher, I don't know if I've ever been saved, but what you're talking about is what I need. And will you pray for me, preacher, that I could know Him as my Savior? Here's my hand. Here's my hand. Yes, amen. Maybe some Christians in the room when you say, Preacher, 
I need to see the light again. It's getting dark. Here's my hand. Amen. Amen. Preacher, I got hurt again. I got cut. I've been wounded. I'm damaged. Will you pray for me? For me, I, I, I need that medication again. Here's my hand. Preacher, I don't know what he's got for my life. Will you pray that he show me what my destiny is? Where he's got what he's got for me. Here's my hand. How about we do this? I promise that I'm going to pray for you. But I find it more advantageous for you to go before the throne of grace and talk to him for yourself. These have already come. I wonder how many have come down here. Every damaged person, every person in darkness, every person with a destiny that has come and call on Jesus. Maybe you just need to say thank you, Jesus. Thank you for being good to me. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for taking my place. Thank you for, for taking away my sins. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being pressed for me. People still come and people move with you all to the You say, preacher, I can't get out. I promise you stand up. They go to move. understand why you love us so much but we sure are thankful 
God, that you chose us. Oh, out of the darkness, out of the damage, you gave us a destiny, yeah, a place to call ours. Thank you. Lord, I pray that you'd continue to work and move in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Brother Daniel's going to come uh, give you some announcements. As he's coming, I do uh, want to tell you this. Um, we said we was going to take a special offering. We're not going to take that physical or as run through the uh, uh, Brother Andy, will you do me a favor? He's going to stand at the back door on your way out. You can drop uh, uh uh, something in there. You say, what's this for, preacher? Um, by faith, we went ahead and bought cameras because we just knew that, that we was going to be in a given spirit today and that we would cover them. Amen. So by faith, we went ahead and bought it. So me and God's going to be awful disappointed if we don't cover these things, but no, we've had an outcry uh, uh, from our people and people across the uh, I know of at least 11 states has reached out to me uh, and uh, a couple of different countries uh, that it's weird um, that are watching our live stream so we're in an effort to, to reach more people to help more people this is not about me or this church it's about jesus christ That's right. uh, we decided to invest a little bit of extra into it give them you a little bit better clearer view i told them we're going to have to get my teeth whitened and i'm going to have to lose a lot of weight hey ma'am um, camera makes you look good <laughs> thank you brother Chris. it's the camera it's not me <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Instead of ultra wide, we're gonna go ultra thin. I see what you did there. Um, come on, Daniel, you're supposed to push me out of here. Um, <laughs> but on our way out, do something there. Yeah. I'll, I'll, but Mike, let's get let's get this new bad guy before you start. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Um, I just want to say we've seen so many soul saviors from you know here recently. It reminds me uh, about three years ago. Uh, I made the best decision of my life. Yeah, that's right. Well, I want to give him praise and thanks for Amen. being the same God. Amen. 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 And then what comes after that is baptism. And we're going to see that today. The, a declaration is what that is. Uh, it's a declaration of, a war, of war against Satan and a declaration from God that this is, this is my son, this is my child that has chosen to believe and uh, we were so excited uh, yeah. about uh, the baptisms that we're going to have this morning. Excited to be able to fill up the baptistry again and get away with only a couple of drops coming out, so that's great. Um, but a few announcements here that I do want to, uh, to, to mention. Um, if you're a guest and you got uh, the, the little uh, gift bag earlier that had the card in it, and you fill that out. If you didn't put it in the offer player, you didn't get a chance to, that's okay. Just leave it on the pew, I will find it. Uh, I promise, just uh, put, it, put it right there, make sure that it's visible and I'll come find that. Um, and then also we've got connect groups tonight here at the church at six o'clock, we'll be getting together downstairs. Uh, and we'll be continuing our study. We're gonna uh, be starting a new one in uh, First Thessalonians. And then at 7.30, uh, the Freedom Bible Study is gonna be downstairs as well. So that's all tonight, six o'clock. And then another one at 7.30, usually we run into each other. That way we can grab some of Caroline's cookies before we leave. So, uh, so we'll be here tonight for that. And then uh, food pantry, we're continuing to do that. Uh, do we have a slide for it, Jason? Uh, so we've got in the uh, month of March, and this is uh, the ladies are bringing corn. Is that right? Yes. Uh, in the month of March, and ladies are bringing corn. Uh, men, you guys are bringing dollars. Uh, so uh, I think the... the it was laid down there last week, a wonderful presentation. So, uh, so yeah, that's right, 50s. That's what I heard. That's, that's what I heard. It's the same size, it's the same paper. So don't worry about that number on there. Um, uh, we've also got uh, Saturday, March 16th at 5. The ladies will be having their annual St. Patrick's Day party. I think the last time they shut down the world, so let's not do that this time. Uh, let, let's hold it all together. Um, so that's going to be great. Uh, and then... Uh, 
let's see, uh, on, they're going to be starting back their Bible study on the 19th. Uh, so if you're going to be getting a workbook for that, uh, the order is due today. So please see Tina. Tina, wave your hand. There she is. Uh, so please see Tina for more details on that. <laughs> We've also got Blasto on uh, March 16th at 5.30 to 7.30. See Nikki and Greg. Uh, if, uh, yeah, there, here's Nikki and Greg. Uh, so uh, if you would like to help out with Blasto, if you want to be part of that, uh, we can use all the help we can get. It's a great time for the kids. That's going to be on March 16th. Uh, so please see Nikki and Greg if you'd like to help out with that. And finally, uh, Project Easter is in full effect. We are planning on, we, we've already seen God moving in mighty ways yes. constantly. And there are people that come to church during Easter that don't go to church any other time of the year. And, and so we are excited and, and we're ready to see God move, but we got to be prepared. And, and so uh, I want you to get one of these. Uh, be sure to put a name on an envelope. Uh, put it in there. Postage is taken care of. There's a return address on it already. No excuses. Let, let's send it out and let's let everybody know that we'd like to be in church with them uh, on Easter Sunday. And then we also have uh, Eggapalooza uh, that's Sunday the 24th, immediately after the service. We're going to be having a family pizza party, and that's the Sunday um, before Easter. And uh, one thing here, uh, next Sunday will be Green Sunday, so just wear green. Uh, it's it's going to be uh, Green Sunday next week. And then uh, we're about to have our baptism, but after uh, the baptism, uh, the, the men that are going to be uh, part of our security team, uh, please meet with Bill. Uh, so I uh, get together with Bill. We're going to talk a little bit about uh, uh, the security, the plans for that, and everything that's coming up. So uh, I believe those are all the announcements that we have for now. If you're not on the band app, uh, please get on the band app. That's a good way to stay in uh, touch with everyone to see what's going on. I think there's a QR code on the back of here uh, that can help you out and uh, point you in the right direction to find out more about what is happening. And uh, that's all that we've got here. And last thing is going to be um, uh, baptism after I'm done. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and have a prayer. And as I am praying, uh, parents, if you've got kids downstairs uh, with uh, Children's Church, uh, just go ahead. One of the parents go on downstairs. Let's make sure we get the kids taken care of, uh, that we don't lose them in the in the crowds. Uh, and those of you that are going to be sticking around for uh, uh, for the baptism, just uh, go ahead and hang out. We'll take a few minutes here to get everybody ready, get everybody lined up, and uh, we'll move on with that. So I'm going to go ahead and pray. And parents, or uh, go ahead and make your way downstairs. Your heavenly Father, God, we praise you and we thank you, Lord, for what you've done today. God, for the blessings that we have seen from you, God, all the uh, the great.